Richard Van Winkler. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Committee. My name is Richard Van Wickler. I'm a long life resident of New Hampshire and have served the last 24 years in law enforcement and continue to do so as the superintendent of the Cheshire County <coughs> Department of Corrections. I do not represent Cheshire County here today. I've taken a vacation day to be here in order to testify as a member of law enforcement against prohibition. LEAP is a nonprofit organization consisting of law enforcement officers, judges, corrections professionals, and others who oppose the current war on drugs policy. House Bill 1705 is smart and responsible legislation, and I speak in favor of this bill. To begin my testimony, I want it to be very clear that I do not advocate the use of alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, or any non-prescribed drug. This discussion and this bill is about our drug policy and the effects of that policy. And considering drug policy in our state and in our nation, we have to ask ourselves the following questions. Is what we are doing effective toward creating a drug-free society? Because that's what the state admission of the current drug war is. Has crime been reduced because of our current policies? Are we safer as a community because of our current policies? Are the costs of incarceration and the surveillance justified. Criminal justice policy should be about promoting public safety and it should be about preventing crime. Our current policies do not achieve this. In my study of drug war policy, I utilized government produced data that was funded by our tax dollars and also reputable research from widely accepted sources to reach my conclusion. As for a policy that protects our <coughs> citizens, Consider that each year in the United States alone, tobacco kills 435,000 people. Poor diet and physical inactivity kill 365,000 people. The illicit use of illegal drugs kills 17,000 people. And the use of marijuana has not killed one single person. The Drug Enforcement Agency has indicated that 75% of the gang war violence is over illegal drug marketplace disputes. The violence associated with drug use in our country is not because of the substance. It's because of the prohibition of those substances. The United States incarcerates more people than any other country. We have 5% of the world's population, and we have 25% of the world's inmates. We now have 2.7 million people behind bars. We have over 7 million people in our correctional system. Consider that 114 million Americans have admitted to using an illegal drug in their lifetime, and 34 million have admitted to using in the last 12 months. The majority of users, by far, is for the use of marijuana. Taking this into consideration, and assuming that we can arrest our way out of it, then we must increase our national jail bed space from 2.4 million jail beds to at least 35 million jail beds. Unfortunately, our current correctional system has become one we can no longer afford. A vote in favor of this bill. It is a vote to end discrimination against harmless people. It is a vote to put illegal drug dealers out of business. It is a vote to reduce crime. It is a vote to increase public safety. It is a vote to more wisely spend criminal justice resources. It's also a vote that will earn revenue that is fair and widely accepted among your constituency. It's a vote that is responsible and smart, and it's based on solid evidence. It's a vote that will greatly assist in keeping it out of the hands of minors because it is regulated and controlled and more difficult for them to access. A vote in favor of this bill does not do the following. It does not endorse the use of drugs any more than we currently endorse the use of alcohol or tobacco. It will not increase the use of drugs by individuals who currently have no desire to use it. Retired Judge James Gray of Orange County, California, said that in his 30 years behind the bench on the front lines of this issue has convinced him that our approach is not working and that our marijuana policy has to change in order to achieve the following goals. 
reduce marijuana consumption by children, stop or reduce the violence and corruption that accompanies the growing and distribution of marijuana, stop or reduce crime, both by people trying to get money to purchase marijuana and by those that are under its influence, reduce the harm to people who consume marijuana, and reduce the number of people we have to put into our jails and our prisons. Latest polls show that 76% of the constituency and 67% of our nation's police chiefs agree with us. Opponents of this bill will tell you, they'll bring up the issue of the gateway theory. There's no study or research ever produced that anyone can cite that will support this. In fact, all studies conducted reveal that the opposite is true. There is no connection. That excuse was first used before Congress in 1937, and it's fascinating that law enforcement officials will still use this testimony to support current drug prohibition laws. Opponents of ending the drug war will testify that if marijuana is legalized, that it will be more readily available. The facts are that marijuana is readily available everywhere in the United States right now. It is so available that our children can buy it in unlimited supply in our schools, which is why pa passage of this legislation is so essential. School children report annually that obtaining illegal drugs is far easier than accessing alcohol or tobacco. Regulating where this substance is and who can access it it's currently what we do not have in our existing policies. This legislation seeks to correct that problem. Opponents of this legislation will tell you that the rate of use among minors will increase if marijuana is legalized. <coughs> the facts are overwhelming that everywhere in this country and around the world where prohibition is eased, the use of the substance goes down, especially with minors. Some law enforcement officers will suggest to you that if this legislation passes, more people will drive under the influence of it. This is preposterous because it assumes that laws dictate behavior. If laws did in fact dictate behavior, we wouldn't be having this discussion today. And of course, once again, there's no evidence to support that claim. Opponents of this bill will say, what kind of a message are we going to be sending to our children if we pass this bill? The current message that we send to our children is this. First, we know that marijuana is widely available to you and that there's a very good chance that you're going to be in its presence and pressured by peers to use it. We don't know who is selling it to you or your peers or what it might be tainted with. The sellers certainly don't care who you are, and we know that. We know that the unlimited supply of marijuana in America is not going to end. We know that the 6,000% markup on this widely used product funds terrorism. The current message to our children is that we've known these facts for 40 years and simply do not know or we do not care what to do about it. In the interest of time, I won't go on with the endless list of unsubstantiated reasons that opponents will give. I'll tell you that there is no evidence to support the claims that a lot of them will make. In summary, our country will spend this year approximately $88 billion in yet another attempt to create a drug-free society, and it's going to fail. When we incarcerate a rapist, a bank robber, or any other mal-insay criminal, the crimes that they were committing stop. Hence the incapacitation effect of incarceration. When we incarcerate an illegal drug dealer, we simply create a job opportunity for another opportunist who will step in and keep the illegal supply and unregulated revenue stream coming in. Most disturbing to me as a citizen and as a taxpayer is that there is no other crime, not domestic violence, not sexual assault, not public corruption, or any violent crime that we pursue with the endless stream of financial and human resources that we commit to fighting the use of illegal drugs. Our policies on drugs should seek to reduce death, disease, crime, and addiction. Our current policies achieve none of these goals. This legislation goes a long way toward reducing all of the current harms associated with prohibition. Please consider the facts, and please honor the evidence. 
As a voter, I'm hopeful that anyone, be it the House, the Senate, the Governor, anybody who's in opposition to this bill will do the responsible thing and provide solid and sound reasoning for his or her actions. To just say no is ineffective and irresponsible to the citizens of New Hampshire. This is responsible legislation, and I encourage its passage. Thank you for the privilege to testify before you today. Any questions for this witness? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, what's the evidence for the idea that uh, uh, marijuana or illegal drugs are easier to get for uh, underage uh, people than beer? There are, I'm sorry, sir. There are polls that are done annually in schools uh, to determine the availability of drugs in those schools in order to give us greater intelligence about how much illegal substance are in our schools. There was a press release done this week. I want to say it was. Uh, perhaps Monday or Tuesday, that said one in three New Hampshire high school students use marijuana. One in three. The other good news about that survey was that New Hampshire has the lowest dropout rate. But the fact is alarming that children have access, unlimited access, to illegal drugs, and they testify year after year after year that it's far easier to get illegal drugs than it is alcohol or tobacco because those substances are regulated. Thank you. Uh, can you answer my question about how many um, people under 21 were arrested in that um, 840 in 2008? No, sir, I can't. Is, it, may I make a general question? Is there anyone that can? Ruby, that's federal, too, so it's not really... Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the answer is he doesn't know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was interested in that figure as well. Would, would you have any idea about comparable figures for New Hampshire? No, sir. I would suggest contacting the Attorney General's office to see what they have available, although I will tell you, based on my experience in trying to get data from New Hampshire, it's not something we're good at. We don't good at data. We're not good at data collection. It's something we need to improve in this state. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have copies. I'll send them forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, for the record.